My name is Rebecca Osborne. When we came to Trinity in 2011, we, uh, it was just the two of us. Now we have two daughters, Naomi, who's now three, and Martha, who is now one year old. And we are currently serving uh, in the Anglican Church of Canada in the Diocese of the Arctic. We live in the far north of Canada on Baffin Island, not quite in the Arctic Circle, but almost uh, in the town of Iqaluit, which is about 8,000 people. Uh, it's the capital of Nunavut, which is a Canadian territory. When we first came to Trinity in 2010, uh, Jared and I felt that God was calling us to full-time ministry in some respect. And we knew we were supposed to go come to Trinity and we knew we were supposed to go then, right then. We weren't supposed to wait. Uh, we weren't supposed to wait to save up money. Uh, we were just supposed to come and come on faith. And uh, that's what we did. And uh, because of Trinity's scholarships, we were able to do just that. We were able to just come. And uh, our tuition was covered by the scholarships and the money that we had, you know, just in savings was enough to get us through our first two years with working part-time. Um, but after that, uh, we, uh, we had to go it a little bit more on faith. Uh, our savings had run out and we were still full-time students. Um, Jared had one more year left and I had two years and we weren't really sure how we were gonna make it. We prayed a lot. We spent a lot of time praying and just asking God, you know, you brought us here. How are you gonna provide for us? Um, you know, we trust you, but this is in your hands. And um, he did, he provided for us sometimes miraculously, sometimes by providing Jared with a little extra work on the side, but he did, he provided for us and he got us through. Um, but apart from those um, miraculous provisions that, you know, were definitely an adventure and kind of trying at times, uh, God provided consistently through the scholarships that we had uh, through Trinity to not have to worry about paying for our tuition. Uh, and all we had to worry about was, you know, just living expenses. So that was a huge blessing for us. Um, and it, you know, meant that we were able to continue through our time at Trinity, our four years at Trinity, and just focus on our studies, you know, work as much as we could, but we could just get through it and then start thinking about ministry and what we were gonna do next. So when we did get a call, because we were able to graduate with no debt, which was a huge deal, we were able to graduate with no debt. When we did get a call, we were able to just go. Um, it's kind of funny for us because Jared and I had been thinking about ministry since before we were married. You know, when we were, you know, before we were, before we were even a couple, we were thinking that we would be involved in missions or ministry or something full time. But we never had a sense of where. We knew what we wanted to do. We knew we wanted to serve God in His church, but we we didn't have a strong sense of, you know, it's going to be in this particular part of the world, or it's going to be at home, or it's going to be church planting. It's going to be this. We didn't know. We were just like, okay, God, you know, wherever wherever you send us, we're ready to go. So then when it happened, it happened really quickly. It was funny. It was almost like I liken it to um, some of my friends who've gotten married. You know, you wait and you wait and you wait for the right person and you think, who's the right person gonna be? You know, time is passing. But then when you meet the right person, it's like, that's it, bam, you know, you just know. You know, For some of my friends, it's been like that. And that's what it was like when we got our call to come to the Arctic. Uh, we heard about uh, we first heard of the Diocese of the Arctic uh, in October of 2014. Um, and we were like, oh, okay, this sounds kind of interesting, but it just sort of stuck in our minds, like the idea of going to the far north and uh, working with the Inuit people and learning their culture. It just sort of stuck in our minds. And as we learned more and more, uh, we just kept thinking, wow, we could, we could get to serve there. Doesn't that sound amazing? And, we both felt that way really strongly. So we went and visited the Diocese of the Arctic in January of 2015. And then we ended up moving here in August of the following year. So, you know, about 10 months after we'd heard that the Diocese of the Arctic existed, we were living here. 
we had just packed up and moved everything and that probably would not have been possible so quickly um, had we not been free of debt and had we not been you know able to just wait on God for what was happening next so being able to start ministry like that you know was um, it was a huge gift to us and it, it's a gift to our church too that we can just be fully present and have a fresh start here in our new home about the Arctic uh, people usually want to know a little bit about what it's like to live up here um, a Callowit uh, is not quite in the Arctic Circle. It's a few degrees south of it, but it still gets very dark and very cold in the winter. Uh, in December, we had about four and a half hours of sunlight at the solstice, so it would get light around nine in the morning and then the sun would go down around one o'clock. Um, so that was really different uh, for our first winter here. And it is also very cold uh, as as I'm taping this, it's now February, and today was uh, minus 31 degrees Celsius, so about minus 22 Fahrenheit was what it was here. But it was a beautiful, calm day. Uh, what really gets it cold is when the wind gets going, and that's when the wind chill can get it down to minus 50, minus 60 Fahrenheit. But it's also really beautiful. Uh, I was just today out looking at the mountains and the snow, and it's just so wild, and it just feels so alive. You wouldn't think that with there not really being that much alive out there that you can see, but it just it feels so alive with God's presence just be, being so beautiful and um, you know just white and rocky and snowy. Um, so we're learning to really love it here. As you're watching this, I believe it's going to be April, so that's when uh, the light will really be all the way back and it'll you know, feel like normal daylight, but everything's still frozen and it's still snowy so people can travel and go hunting and build igloos and uh, it's really fun to be outside. So hopefully as you watch this we'll be playing outside in the snow and going out on the ice. Um, so. As we're settling in here in the Arctic, we've been here, as you're watching this, we've been here about eight months. Um, so we are really enjoying parish ministry and getting to know uh, how to do parish ministry. Uh, it's still our first year, so we're still getting the ropes, but we have some uh, excellent mentors here and a, an established church that is working with us and that we're helping out. Um, we're learning the Inuit language up here, which is called Inuktitut. Uh, we've gotten to take some classes, um, and that's just a lifelong dream to get to learn to the language and culture of, uh, of a people group like this. Um, so yeah, we're getting to know the people, getting to know our city, uh, and getting to know uh, how to be pastors in our context. And uh, we really appreciate your support, and uh, we're really thankful that you're here and that you're going to come alongside us too, and alongside all of the future pastors and scholars that are going to serve God's church. So thanks for watching. <laughs>